Good morning, good morning. Buenos dias, como están? And in this community, one third of our students are from the Philippines or their families from the Philippines and they say it, maganang umaga, maganang umaga. Let's all try that. <laughs> Mang, andang, umaga. You just learned a language. And you know what we do is kind of like learning a language. It's fun, it's challenging, and it takes a lot of practice. And um, there's someone in my audience, audience today, well, there's a few people I know in the audience, but there's one special person. It's the first time in my whole career that I have a family member listening to this little welcome. And uh, Mr. Brandon Schott, could you stand up, please? Brandon helps uh, teachers learn technology in the Stanislaus County. Brandon is the first person in his family to go to college. And we have many students like that, first person in their family that are on the road to college. How many people have students like that? They're first, they're stu they have students, they'll be the first in their family to go to college. So we have this moral obligation to give all our students the tools to have a great career or the skills to change careers midfield and to have what we call the four C's. And how many people are familiar with the four C's? Okay. So we say it, even in Napa, four years ago I was up on this stage and I said, we believe in 21st century skills. It's part of our vision. It's one of our three goals and I can tell you today that we're doing some of it. And the Common Core has taken our attention as educators and said, these are high power standards. These are good for kids. And I wanna give you the permission to do, go beyond the Common Core. Our kids need the four C's, and in some places it's called the six C's because they add uh, global citizenship and character. Our kids need it and we need it. So our teachers in American Canyon are leading the way. So by the way, our three goals, all kids ready for college and careers. Two, equitable access and opportunities to close the achievement gap. And in California, we have a big achievement gap for African American students, and Latino students, and some Asian groups, like Hmong, who were farmers and came to this country without a, a real formal education like other, other Asian groups. Our Native Americans, they're a small minority, but they have some of the highest suicide rates and dropout rates. So we're here for all kids, and so our second goal is to have equitable access and, and close, to close the achievement gap. And our third goal is what our teachers would say four years ago, but we're so busy doing goal one and goal two that we don't have time for goal three. And goal three is to instill 21st century skills, to teach and have students learn and master the four C's. Because if you can be creative and if you can collaborate and you use critical thinking and you can communicate, you'll go anywhere. And it's like teaching students to dance. You don't start with the damp steps. You start with the music. And we have to teach the skills of the dance steps. But you keep the music playing. So please, please do our kids a favor and keep the music playing. Because kids are drawn to music as they are the four C's. So have them doing something in their community, in their school, something beyond the classroom that makes their learning real because then they'll learn the steps because they want to dance. I appreciate you being here. We have several people from our district. Please share your best ideas and they'll share what they're doing and enjoy this conference. The last thing I want to say is that we're very, very grateful for Mike Lawrence and the Q Board for, ho for having us, allowing us to have this conference here. If we could give a big hand for the Q staff and board.
more right here. You know, they don't have to have it here in American Canyon, but they, but they do, and it's a big benefit for us because we can send teachers here, and a lot of our teachers will be here tomorrow, but the main thing is it's so nice for us to learn from all of you as you share with one another. Thank you all for being here, and if we could give a big round of applause for Mr. Mike Lawrence, the uh, executive director, all-around great guy, Mr. Mike Lawrence. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you for hosting us. Thank you, sir. Excited to be at Fall Q? This is our sixth year uh, with Fall Q at American Canyon High School, and I want to thank Patrick Sweeney and his team for their leadership, and I want to thank their IT staff. Uh, they did a ground-up rebuild and worked, had worked with HP to improve the network from last year to this year. Uh, and uh, one reminder they all asked me to, to ask all of you is please turn off your hotspots. Uh, let's have a hotspot huddle. Find a putty, just look, just look at your phone, because here's the thing, I do this too. You turn on a hotspot for a need and then you forget to turn it off, and then you walk onto our campus uh, 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 here for this event, and it just creates a bit of a problem. So have a hotspot huddle, everybody find a buddy, open up your phone, your iPad, your device, make sure you just don't have that hotspot turned on, okay? Everybody check with your buddy, show that you do you have your hotspot off, and then everybody in the overflow room, you guys can do the same thing. It's just a quick little huddle, hotspot huddle, and we'll make sure that we have a rock-solid network. Okay? Oh, and by the way, did you all catch uh, Patrick's Twitter handle so we can all follow Patrick on, on the Twitters? Okay, great. Excellent. So welcome. Uh, as uh, Patrick said, I'm Mike Lawrence. I'm CEO of Q and thrilled to be here again. Uh, I, I realized that Q's very first fall conference was in 1980. And so this is our 35th anniversary conference. It's kind of exciting. So we're really excited about that and happy to um, continue. Um, uh, We've got a couple of announcements. I wanted to thank our sponsors. You probably saw the rotating slides, but we're thrilled to have a record number of sponsors there this year. Uh, we thank them there for their support. You can check out their tables over in the D building, um, in the stairwell and all, all three floors. Uh, please stop by and, and thank them for sponsoring and find out what they're able to offer to your schools and your districts uh, in their solutions and uh, we appreciate their, their support of this event. Uh, we have a hashtag for this conference, it's uh, FallQ, so hashtag FallQ, and uh, please do follow us on the social media outlets that we've got listed here. Uh, there's bonus hashtags if you want bonus points. Um, you can help our friends that couldn't make it. This is a sold out event. Help our friends that couldn't make it by posting resources and using FallQ, but you could also alert them with the not at Q. Uh, someone very clever came up with Qless, which I think is pretty funny. <laughs> Um, but I didn't put that here. And then Q Rockstar is a program that we have going on, so there's a lot of really amazing folks posting to that hashtag. And then CE15 is Connected Educator Month 2015, uh, which we're part of, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, so just some of the bonus ones. So we, uh, we have another event like this, uh, only slightly larger, in Palm Springs, and uh, it sold out this last March, and we wanna make sure that you're aware of it and that you could go. We're gonna have a raffle to give you a free registration, and tomorrow on this stage, we will be announcing the keynote speakers. And there's two listed in your program, so it's not a big surprise for those two. Uh, we'll announce those as well. But there's one more that's awesome that I'm gonna tell you about tomorrow. And you'll be among the first humans to find out, so make sure you're here. I did tell my dog. Uh, we're excited about the showcase this last year, and uh, it did transition. It used to be uh, the California Student Technology Showcase, produced by the California Department of Education and hosted by Q, and it is now turning into the Student Powered Showcase. We put students first, and it's gonna be focusing on STEAM, on makerspaces, and some really amazing things. So if you'd like your students to be featured at the Student Powered Showcase, we're announcing today uh, that we'll be hosting it on the Saturday of the Q Conference, which is March 19th, 2016 in Palm Springs. So every county is gonna be invited, all 58 counties, we're gonna send out a mass email and invite them and see if there's a way that they can uh, put together some representatives and send them out to Palm Springs. We only have limited space, so we can't accept all 58 counties uh, for this pr first ever student-powered showcase. But it continues the long tradition that began in 2001 when I sat on an advisory committee of teachers. I was actually a classroom teacher um, and uh, represented Region 9 at the time uh, to help build this uh, student technology showcase. It's now morphing into the Q Student Powered Showcase. So we're really excited about that. It's done in partnership with the Orange County Department of Education. Good folks, anyone from OCDE here? Anyone make the trek? Yay! All right, very good. So we're very happy to have Stacy Diebel Reynolds, Vivian 
uh, Goldschmidt and Laura Del Santi uh, on our team to help produce this event and carry on the great tradition from the Student Technology Showcase. Um, as I was already mentioned, uh, this wouldn't be possible without the vision and leadership of our board of directors, and I wanted to introduce them to you today and invite Ray Chavez to come on up to the stage, so it'll take a couple steps for Ray to come on over. And uh, we're happy to add Tim Green to the board of directors. He was elected in um, May, so Tim, welcome to the board of directors. And uh, we have, they all have Twitter handles. Did you notice that? I think this Twitter thing has taken off. <laughs> Ray Chavez, ladies and gentlemen, your board president. Well, uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, you have to forgive me. Um, the day before yesterday, I was in Paris. So I just flew back in from Paris, and I'm still in the mindset of Paris. So I want to say bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> and I want to say merci, mucho, Rita, OK? You know, so I was in Spain, and then I went into Paris. So I'm still a little bit jet lag, but I'm going to do my best here to do a welcome on behalf of the Q board. It really is my pleasure to serve with a great group of individuals that you see up here on the screen a few minutes ago. And um, I just want to recognize them uh, for all the work and all the leadership and direction that they provide. We have them seated across the room here. Uh, Mike's introduced uh, them already, so I won't introduce them again. But I just want to thank my, my fellow board members and recognize them for all of their work and, and really appreciate uh, the pleasure to work with them. It really takes a lot of work uh, to pull a conference like this together. And as Mike mentioned, um, a lot of people are involved. And I'd like to recognize some of those people this morning as we start out this morning. Certainly, there is a conference planning committee. And I want to say right away that thank you, merci, thank you so much, merci beaucoup, uh, for the, all of the work, uh, those of you on the conference planning committee. So if we could just give them a round of applause right now. And if you would stand, I just want to recognize you. All right. Thank you. Merci, muchas gracias. So the conference planning committee had the challenge of going over hundreds of applicants for speaking at this conference. And you can imagine uh, doing that selection is always a challenge. But we think we have a terrific program here uh, for you this next two days. And I just want to uh, recognize all of you that are presenting. Um, you're taking the time. You've done a lot of work to get your presentations uh, together. And I'm sure all of us are going to appreciate very much the things that you have to share today. So I want to recognize all of our speakers. Along with that, you see a lot of people out here directing and helping with the flow and the registration and all the things that go on. And I just want to recognize the volunteers. Um, this organization is really based on the work of a lot of volunteers. And certainly, those of you that are um, members of boards of affiliates and you're certainly maybe your local president, I want to recognize all of you for all of your work at the affiliate level. Um, this organization could not thrive with all of your work and all of your support at the local level. So I just want to wish you a great conference um, in these next two days. And again, thank you so much. And I, I want to turn it back over to our CEO, Mike Lawrence. And before I do, I want to recognize Mike and the staff. They do a terrific job. There's a lot of planning. The very day that this is over, the planning starts for the next year. So I want to recognize not only Mike, the staff, the great job that they do, and I want to recognize again Napa and our, the superintendent, Pedro, thank you for having us again, and uh, it's just a pleasure. I wish you well. Again, you know, buena suerte para todos los días. Okay? Gracias. Thank you, Ray. Now, full disclosure, um, you don't get to go to Paris in Spain just because you're the Q president. So we encourage you to think about running for the board. I just I want to set expectations at an appropriate level. So um, we have a newly streamlined process that you can become a board of direct, uh, member of the board of directors. Um, you, can, you can go to the check it out at the website. It, the deadline is December 17th. So think about it. Who could be the next leader? Who could be the next visionary that could join Ray and the rest of the board and help guide this ship that is called Q? Uh, we also streamlined and shortened the Q awards process. Take a look at q.org slash awards. And one thing we did that we, I, I'm really excited about and I wanted to explain here is that uh, these are the awards that you can usually nominate as a member. There's, there's really only three. You could do a gold disc, outstanding emerging teacher, or site leader of the year. And they're due December 10th. It's always the second Thursday of December. 
And we have many more awards than that, but they are, um, they are put in by different groups. The board of directors can pick people for the platinum disc, uh, affiliates name, the winners for outstanding teacher and technology and learning leader, and that is great. What we wanted to do this year was increase the pool of candidates for those extra special awards, and so we're adding a November 15th deadline for you to suggest candidates for those other awards. And if they go in, they, if it's a platinum disc, it goes to the board and staff. If it's a making it happen, it goes to board and staff. If it's the other ones, uh, advocacy goes to the advocacy committee. And they look at your suggestions, and from that, they pick the winner. So uh, we wanted to invite you to submit for all of those awards, which was, is a really exciting shift. I want to make sure I explained it here. Uh, but we're also going to blast that out via email. So start thinking about the heroes around you. Um, and yes, you can self-nominate Bert Lowe. Uh, <laughs> it's q.org slash awards. I'm kidding. He's a gold disc recipient. Everyone, Bert Lowe, ladies and gentlemen. Bert Lowe. Um, we have another event. I want to share this specifically because this is a sold out event and there's a lot of folks that wanted to be here that couldn't be here and so we want to make sure they know that Q produces more than the two big conferences. We also do partnership events called Symposium, uh, Symposia. And uh, this one is an event called the E-Learning Strategy Symposium. We partner with the Stanislaus County Office of Education. Any Stanislaus folks? Other than Bert? Yay, all right, so we produce this event it's December 3rd, 4th, 5th. It's in Costa Mesa this year, uh, and registration is still open. Um, there's actually a discount code that we will send out to you via email, so it closed Wednesday, because, but because you're special, you're gonna still get a chance to join that. Chris Haskell, who's the, a professor and co-inventor of 3D Game Lad, is our opening keynote, and um, we have uh, Catlin Tucker as our closing keynote. She's a blended teacher and author, so please, if you can, make time. We also are doing this thing called Q Rockstar Teacher Camps. Anyone heard of T Q Rockstar? Yeah. And we have a new version of it. These are for TOSAs, teachers on special assignment. I always wanted to be a teacher on special assignment. I never got to be a teacher on special assignment. I always thought it was kind of cool, and they give you like code names like 007. Anyway, we have amazing special assignment folks. Uh, lined up for this special event, and it's going to be at uh, the Remind headquarters in San Francisco on December 5th and 6th. Registration, I think we're down to 17, maybe 16 seats at the time that I put the slide together. Uh, so hurry up if you'd like to go. We also have an event for administrators. How many of you are administrators? Okay, great. How many of you would love your administrator to come to an event like this? <laughs> yes. Send them. Send them to Lead 3. It's an event that we co-produce with AXA and TCAL, a statewide effort. And uh, it's going to be in April, and it's going to be in Redondo Beach. You can fly into Long Beach Airport or, or LA Airport, or if you live down there, just drive over. It's right by Ruby's. It's a nice place. And we're going to have some keynotes. We've yet to pick the keynotes. And right now, we're looking for presenters. So if you're an administrator or an uh, a administrator want to be, you can apply and present. Uh, we also, for this first year, this year we're doing this, on this stage we have what are called spotlight speakers. So if you check your program or if you go online and you search for theater or spotlight, we have uh, eight amazing spotlight speakers. We flew in some of them from all over the place. So please make sure you, you look at that. It's a massive room, obviously. It's this room, this stage. And we're also live streaming them out. So those not at, not at Q folks, the, the Q-less folks, um, we can stream these out and they can enjoy those sessions in addition to the keynotes. So it's right here in this theater. We want to make sure you're aware of that. We're also, as I mentioned, streaming live. So tell your friends. It's q.org slash live. It's live right now. Everybody wave. we got three cameras. Everybody, we're live. There you go. So q.org slash live. And uh, you can have folks check it out. We also want to encourage you to use the online schedule and click the button to evaluate. This is one of our spotlight speakers. I wanted to give Joe a shout out because he's not on the theater stage. He's, he's in a different room. So go check out Joe's session. And then evaluate it and tell us how we can make this uh, conference even better next year. And you, you do it by hitting that button there. And of course, there's a raffle. <laughs> we are giving away Pasco Capstone, and that's uh, a value of about $500. And Brain Pop, good folks at Brain Pop are giving us not one, not two, not three, but four different flavors of the Brain Pop software. And we can have Ray come back up, and he can do it in French, he can do it in Espanol, um, and those are the four things we're going to raffle off for our brain pop. It's a, it's a value of $1,200. Uh, and then, of course, this little shindig we have in Palm Springs. We're going to give away conference registration and membership. It's a $300 value. You, too, could win uh, our conference registration to this place right here in Palm Springs. So think about that. Uh, I also want to let you know we've got two new staff. The Q staff is growing. That amazing team that Ray was talking about, Miriam Brutus, joined us. 
in May, officially, and she is our office and membership assistant. And Eileen Walters, who's homesick with, with an ear uh, thing today, uh, she just joined our, our staff, and we're thrilled to have her on board as our Leading Edge Certification Coordinator and Volunteer, Le volunteer Leadership Coordinator. So uh, if you see them around, so do say hello and welcome them to the team, and uh, tell Eileen you hope she feels better. Um, and we also want to let you know an exciting transition for one of our team members, Julie Kimberly. Uh, Q is founded on teachers, founded on people that are doing amazing things in the classroom. And Julie's worked for this for over two years, and she's now going back into the classroom. She's going to teach a math, math class and apply all the things that she's learned. So we wish her well uh, in that next new adventure uh, as she goes to the classroom. It's my uh, great pleasure to introduce you to the superintendent of the Napa County Office of Education. The reason why you're here at this school is that this woman said, well, why don't you just go to the, the new high school that they're building and have the conference there. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbara Nemco. Thank you, Mike. Good morning and welcome everybody. I would like to recognize all of you because I have a funny feeling that there are no little elves who are going to come in and do the work that you would have been doing today if you had stayed at your school. So thank you so much for being here this morning. I uh, actually was in uh, Napa yesterday and I flew in this morning. Actually, that probably means I drove too fast. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce this morning's opening keynote speaker. She was the 25th state superintendent of public instruction in California. Uh, how many of you were not teaching in California or possibly anywhere in before 2002? So for many of you, this is going to be a new introduction and a great treat. If you look at Wikipedia, Wikipedia says that Delane Easton was the first female state superintendent of public, public instruction in California. So note to Wikipedia, you can't be the first unless there's a second. And there hasn't been a second which makes her the only female state superintendent of public instruction in California. When Delane, Delane's family moved from San Diego to San Francisco when she was in the second grade, and she was in an elementary school classroom with 44 students. That's a little big. And it was not the best fit for her. So her parents decided they needed to buy a house, and they needed to buy a house in a school district that had smaller class sizes. And so they bought their home in San Carlos, and she went from a class of 44 to a class of 20. Now, don't get nervous. I'm not going to go year by year from her second grade all the way through today in the introduction. But I mention that because that was so profound for her that one of the first things that Delane did upon being elected as state superintendent in 1994 was to convince the legislature and the governor that we needed class size reduction, and that's how we ended up with K three having only 20 students in the class. So for those of you who remember, if you were teaching in the bad old days before we had that, and then you got to the good old days where we had class size reduction, or some of you started in the good days of class size reduction and then lived to uh, experience not class size reduction, you know what a huge difference that makes. So among the other things that Delane did upon being elected was at the time she was elected in 1994, every district was developing their own standards. A thousand school districts, thousand set of standards in the state of California. And she said that doesn't make any sense and so started to uh, a movement to develop state standards so that we all knew what we were doing and we were not all recreating the wheel. In addition to that, we were not very well wired at that time. And so the very first net day occurred because of Delane, where she brought in thousands of volunteers from all over the state to wire the buildings so that we could evolve to the place where we are today. And at that time, it was so novel that President Clinton, Vice President Gore, and the entire cabinet came to California for the event. <laughs> it 
She started the first technology task force in the state of California. So every time you use technology in your classroom today, it evolved from the fabulous woman who was our keynote speaker. And one of the things I love dearly about Delane is she never, ever wasted an opportunity to tell the legislature and or the governor how foolish they were if they were not investing in public education and the children of California. So please join me in giving a great warm welcome to Delane Easton. Thank you, Barbara.